Hey, thanks for clicking on the video because today we're going to be looking at structural plans. And I've got a foundation and slab on grade plan pulled up. And yes, once again, we're looking at the Hollabird Academy in the city of Baltimore. So this is an existing building. All right, so getting into it, um, on these plans, you'll see that there are some section cuts that will show details on other sheets of some of the foundation. Zooming in here, we can also see that there are a few different patterns on here. And I'll let you know that uh, this is a, a wall that's going to be a combination of concrete, it looks like there, and maybe something like masonry or drywall even. And normally when you see this kind of a pattern, an X pattern, that indicates that this is a masonry wall. Again, that indicates it's concrete. So these are things that you can already see and get an idea about the, um, the foundation. You already had an idea that there was going to be concrete involved, but now you can see that there are, are some masonry walls. And some of the concrete walls appear to have a mixture of different things going on in that assembly. So, with no further ado, let's look at the schedules off to the right hand side here. Uh, these schedules will help you navigate through the drawings so that you'll know what all of these marks mean. So, really quickly you can see these marks, C1s all the way through the 7s, you can see them off uh, on your drawings. And so there's, they're pointing to something and we'll get to that but so those are your columns and I'll let you know something else about the columns those are going to be steel columns sometimes you have concrete columns that are poured they have concrete reinforcement uh, I mean they have rebar in them uh, but these are steel columns and you can tell that because the sizes and the notations indicate uh, w1039 the W is the wide flange and then you have some of the columns that uh, this HSS stands for hollow structural steel so those are going to look different and so here are the base plates uh, the bases of those columns how they're going to be uh, fastened to uh, the concrete you know to hold it in place all right, so those are your columns, and you can refer to that. You also have your concrete pier schedule. The concrete pier appears to maybe be a cube. It says it's 24 by 24. Also under reinforcement, it says eight number six vertical. So there are number six size rebar, and there are eight of them all within that concrete pier. All right, and then you have your footings. So the footings, there are various sizes, and I'll tell you that those are going to be concrete with reinforcing steel in them, also known as rebar. And uh, you can see the thickness of the footings here. So the, all of the sizes are right here. This first footing is six foot by six foot, and it's one foot thick and there are five number six rebar each ray each way at the bottom now let me let you know that um, a company that does this reinforcing will normally have a detailer do their own set of shop drawings that will have a lot more detail than just what this line says and so they'll have a set of drawings that they'll use um, based off of this set of drawings and then you have your wall footings uh, wall footings are really little short walls and it gives the size of them there this one is two feet and it's continuous and it's one foot thick and uh, other details are below but anyway now let's go and look at the plan itself all right let's zoom into this area here uh, this these columns are going to support the canopy all right so looking at them um, you see the column size these are the ones that have the abbreviation HSS hollow structural steel and those are what are going to be supporting supporting that canopy that sits right out here and so picturing this 
Um, below the column, the column and the base plate are going to be fastened with bolts to the pier. And then you've got your footing. That's this largest piece. And I believe that the F1 was the six foot by six foot size there. All right, so as you can see, there are many of these assemblies with the columns and the footings, and uh, that's typical. This is what supports the building. We're on the detail page and taking a look at what this column footing and pier combination actually looks like. So you can see the steel column here, and this is your pier and your footing. All of those darkened lines are the rebar. But let's pop back over to the other page. We'll come back here and explain some of these notations a little later. When those are done, then you'll get ready to pour the slab on grade. Think of like a pancake. You're pouring across a griddle. You're pouring this slab across this whole area. Now, this will never all get poured in one sweep something like this would normally be broken up into several concrete pours but uh, i want to pay attention to some of the notes here and explain them all right so this area here i'm familiar with the architectural plans this is uh where the gym is this is the floor for the gym so that's why there's a note here um indicating that there is a slope whenever you see this this sort of a deal here with the x uh, this means that it's sloping to this low point or well this is a low point in this case because it says that it is below zero and it is um, actually two and three quarter inches uh, sloped down from this point so that's what you have that's that's what they want the slab to do and that is for draining purposes for the wood floor system in the gym. And so you see similar notes here uh, with slopes. There's, there's more slopes there and you have thickened slabs. So this area is not going to be the same thickness as the rest of the slab. It's actually going to be uh, one foot thick. And by the way, how do you find out how thick the slab that they're pouring is going to be? Well, one thing that we didn't look at, and we're kind of jumping around here, I apologize, but we didn't look at the general notes. So looking at the general notes, we should really quickly be able to see uh, the first note says the slab on grade, unless noted otherwise, shall be five inch thick normal weight concrete reinforced with six by six okay it gives a lot of other stuff but basically this is a five inch slab on grade unless noted otherwise and we kind of skipped ahead and saw the noted otherwise would be right there okay i think we've looked at this plan view enough now it's time to kind of change views and look at this from a different angle Maybe let's look at this transition between the thickened slab and the five inch slab on grade. Maybe this shows it here. So we're going to sheet S-4.1H and we're look, going to look at detail P there. All right, we're on the page and there's the detail that we're looking at. All right, so if you've never looked at this, let me orientate you. So we are standing on that slab right now, only we've stepped in quicksand and we are now with our head almost in the sand. We're looking straight ahead. This is what we would see. You could see that the concrete right here is five inches. This is your normal concrete. And then it dips down right there all the way to one foot. Now these other darkened lines, that is your, that's your reinforcing, that's your rebar. These other dots, that's your rebar too, it's just, this is your rebar coming straight at you. And here would be a good uh, time to point out that you have different shapes for your rebar and those are identified different ways. You know, you have your hook bars and then you have your L bars. Uh, you have your J bars. There's uh, lots of different bars 
not just straight. Okay, yes, we are back at the foundation plan because I didn't want to get too much into the weeds with all of the details. I don't want people's heads to explode. But come back for another video and I will get more into those details that we were just looking at. Uh, we'll break down uh, some of those. But hopefully I was able to just give you a good solid overview of how to look at a foundation plan and some of the components and assemblies that go into that. If I did, then go ahead and subscribe. That way you'll be signed up for when the next video comes out. And uh, I'd like to hear from you in the comment section. Let me know, are you into construction? How'd you find the page? And how are you liking the content? Anyway, I'll check you guys out next time. Peace out.